Hello. At the outset, I would like to thank the World Jewish Congress and the mission of Germany for bringing us together in convening this important event, co-sponsored also by Albania. Anti-Semitism and other kinds of hate speech and discrimination are an attack on the very essence of our human rights, norms, and principles. As new digital channels are enabling an instant and global dissemination of anti-Semitism, we are faced with unprecedented challenges, and we all need to step up our response. Albania, a country well known for its long-standing tradition of religious harmony, stands ready to offer its contribution. And while we commit that there should be zero tolerance for anti-Semitism, we should also ensure that these statements are accompanied by actions. And Albania walks the talk. In October, the Albanian parliament adopted the working definition of anti-Semitism as defined by the International Alliance for the Remembrance of the Holocaust. Following the adoption of this landmark resolution, on 28 October, Albania's parliament hosted the first ever Balkan Forum Against Anti-Semitism, thus reaffirming its proactive role as a regional leader in the fight against anti-Semitism. Within the United Nations, Albania has a constructive partnership with the Holocaust and the UN Outreach Program in supporting awareness raising of the dangers of anti-Semitism. Last year, the mission of Albania, in partnership with the UN Department of Global Communications and the World Jewish Congress, hosted an event at the UN headquarters on the rescuing of Jews in Albania during the Holocaust, recognizing Albania's response as an example of moral courage. Anti-Semitism is not only an attack on Jews, but also on our common universal values. As our Prime Minister Edi Rama put it, anti-Semitism is a threat to our own civilization. In concluding, I would like to emphasize that our common message from both governments and civil society should be loud and clear. Anti-Semitism is socially, politically, and religiously unacceptable. My country stands ready to support initiatives and programs within the UN and in cooperation with like-minded countries to stand up and combat anti-Semitism, as well as other forms of racism, prejudice, and hate. I thank you. The persecution, eviction, and homicide of European Jews has left us with a devastating legacy. Yet, until today, the traces of anti-Semitism in Austria and Europe have still not been erased. Quite the contrary. Unfortunately, anti-Semitism is on the rise across the globe, not least in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Austria has a special responsibility for Jewish life. Therefore, the Austrian government is taking that very serious. This is why today Austria stands at the forefront of the fight against anti-Semitism, against racism and intolerance, and against violent extremism. Only two weeks ago, an Islamist terrorist attack struck the heart of Vienna directly in front of our main synagogue. And it struck the core of our values as an open, diverse and free society. Violent extremism, xenophobia, racism, intolerance and anti-Semitism are rising worldwide. Yet, we are more determined than ever to protect the values of freedom, democracy and human rights that unite us with our partners and the United Nations. Therefore, Austria pledges to develop a comprehensive national strategy to prevent and combat all forms of anti-Semitism in cooperation with representatives of the Jewish community in Austria, with concrete measures to better protect Jewish communities and institutions. To work towards the full implementation of the EU Council Declaration on the fight against anti-Semitism concluded during Austria's EU Presidency in December 2018.
to continue its strong engagement to address anti-Semitism and the protection of religious minority as well as violent extremism. In the General Assembly, the Human Rights Council and UNESCO, including corporations with like-minded states and interested organizations. We have to continue to support United Nations initiatives and events for Holocaust remembrance and education, especially within the framework of UNESCO. And to continue to promote the working definition of anti-Semitism of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which Austria accepted in 2017. We have to further strengthen our forces in the fight against all forms of anti-Semitism. Thank you very much. My name is Sven Alkalai. I'm the ambassador, permanent representative for Bosnia Herzegovina to the United Nations. We welcome this very important event organized by the World Jewish Congress on the occasion of the 75th United Nations General Assembly on combating anti-Semitism. My country would like to give a small contribution to the general efforts in this endeavor. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a country with a population of 3.8 million. It is a true multi-ethnic, multicultural and multi-religious community. Besides the Muslim population, which is over 50%, there are Christian Orthodox, Roman Catholics and Jews. The houses of worship of these four religions stand side by side for centuries. The Jewish community is the smallest one and has the roots of the Jews who were expelled from Spain in 1492. Since then, they live in Bosnia and Herzegovina and had never to live in the ghettos. Before the Holocaust, there were 10,000 Jews in Sarajevo, but the population was decimated during the Holocaust. Now there are about 1,000 Jews in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Anti-Semitism is increasing in Europe, with far-right parties gaining ground in France, Belgium, Ukraine, and Netherlands. Jews may have the reason to fear again. Recently, we witnessed attacks in Paris and Brussels, but when we are talking about anti-Semitism in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I can say that practically there is no problem of anti-Semitism. The doors of our synagogue are always open. We do not have armed guards in front nor metal detectors. This is largely due to the role of the Jewish community during the war in the Balkans in 1995, when the Jewish community helped other religious and ethnic groups while living together. In order to preserve this, Jews are fully engaged through different institutional groups like Interfaith Religious Council, where all leaders of religious groups coordinate activities in order to preserve peace and tolerance. By co-sponsoring this very important and timely event, my country Bosnia Herzegovina would like to contribute to the meaning that never again really means never again. Thank you. Canada is very proud to be joining with a number of co-sponsors on this very important mission to continue to deal with anti-Semitism where we find it. Nous sommes complètement engagés dans cette bataille. Peut-être il y a ceux qui pensent que la bataille est, est déjà finie, c'est l'antisémitisme, c'est plus une question vivante, mais nous savons très bien que c'est une forme de racisme qui est euh, un des plus vieux, un des plus anciens dans le monde, mais aussi, et ça c'est important, c'est vraiment quelque chose que nous devons continuer de lutter. It has contributed uh, greatly to so many hardships for not only for the Jewish people, but, but for people around the world, because it has created a climate of, of hatred, of conspiracy theories, of, of ways of, of uh, singling people out, of stereotyping people. Uh, and it's something which we are completely committed to combating as actively as we possibly can. Uh, avec l'UNESCO, nous avons créé un partenariat avec le Musée uh, de l'Holocaust des États-Unis sur la question de l'éducation contre l'antisémitisme. Nous avons accepté complètement la, dé la définition euh, qui vient de l'IHRA et c'est important pour, pour la bataille que nous allons continuer. Euh, nous allons continuer la bataille à travers les, les organismes de, 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 des Nations Unies. We want to make this a program that applies to the United Nations, the organization, in all aspects of its work. Canada is there 
to continue the fight against anti-Semitism, to call it out when we see it, and to deal with it when we find it. And that's exactly what we're going to continue to do. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 75 years after the World War II and the terrible Holocaust, we are facing an unacceptably high level of anti-Semitism. This is a global problem exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Like all forms of intolerance and discrimination, anti-Semitism has a profound impact on society, undermining democratic values and human rights. Its solution is a matter of extreme urgency. We cannot be passive or even indifferent to this evil. We need to combat it together. We consider the fight against anti-Semitism to be an important area for deepening cooperation within the EU, the UN, UNESCO, the OECE, the Council of Europe, and the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. The Jewish communities and other partners to turn back the tide of rising anti-Semitism. I will briefly mention some specific steps we have taken or are taking to enhance the UN's efforts in combating anti-Semitism on a national level. Following the Prague Conference on Holocaust Assets and the Terezin Declaration, signed 11 years ago, we plan a high-level meeting during our forthcoming EU presidency in 2022 to review progress in education, the fight against anti-Semitism, and the restitution of Jewish property. In January 2019, the Parliament of the Czech Republic adopted the working definition of anti-Semitism defined by the IRA. It further recommended to use it as a critical non-legal tool in education and awareness raising and for responding to manifestations of anti-Semitism. In November 2019, our Chamber of Deputies adopted a resolution condemning all forms of anti-Semitism, including Holocaust denial. Preserving the memory of Holocaust victims as a reminder to the younger generation is crucial, as the time is approaching when the survivors and direct witnesses of this tragedy will no longer be with us. Therefore, the government approved further funding of the Holocaust Victims Foundation for the period 2020-2024, uh, amounting to 4 million euro. The teaching of the Shoah is one of the main tools in the fight against growing xenophobia, racism and anti-Semitism. The challenge is to find new ways to educate young people. Civil society actors can actively support the key role of the state. We are intensifying their activities in the fight against anti-Semitism on all fronts, from prevention to ensuring greater protection for the victims. In particular, we are trying to put in place mechanisms to detect anti-Semitic hate speech online in real time and to report them immediately to law enforcement authorities in order to prevent their further spread. Finally, let me assure you that my country is committed to combating anti-Semitism in all of its forms, whenever and wherever it arises. We have promised to protect the Jews, to protect the Danish Jews. It is my intention to honor that commitment. Now, there is an unbroken line from this statement by Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen in September this year, and all the way to the pastoral letter from the Danish bishops in 1943, issued under the fear of an imminent deportation of Danish Jews to Nazi German concentration camps. A letter which priests read out loud in all Danish churches on October 3rd, 1943. Wherever Jews are being persecuted, it is the duty of Christians to protest, the letter stated. Race and religion should never become a pretext to deprive people of their rights, freedom, nor property, it continued. The letter also admonished that, notwithstanding our different religious views, we will fight for our Jewish brothers and sisters to maintain, maintain the same freedom which we cherish more than our own lives. That the vast majority of the Jewish community in Denmark was brought to safety in neutral Sweden over the following days and, week, days and weeks by an improvised fleet of small fishing boats is now history. It is proud history. 
The action saved more than 95% of all Danish Jews, who after years of exile came back to their untouched homes in Denmark in 1945. On this note, I thank you for the opportunity to address this high-level event on mainstreaming the combating of anti-Semitism within the UN system. This is an important platform to discuss how to step up the fight against anti-Semitism through the UN system, which, founded on the horrors and sufferings of the Second World War, still has the global lead in promoting human rights and protecting vulnerable groups. In November 2019, Denmark hosted an official visit of the personal representative of the OSCE chairperson in office on combating anti-Semitism, Rabbi Baker. Rabbi Baker highlighted the permanent physical protection of the Jewish community, including schools and synagogues, and the close cooperation between the government and the Jewish community as the Danish model, a model which he found could serve as an inspiration for other countries in the fight against anti-Semitism. Sadly, anti-Semitism is on the rise globally, in Europe, and in my own country, Denmark. Consequently, in 2019, the Danish government decided to prepare a national action plan to combat anti-Semitism. Planned to be launched in early 2021, the plan will also deal with Denmark's participation in the international fight against anti-Semitism. With the necessary reservation, I can mention that in the action plan, we also expect to devise concrete steps to combat anti-Semitism through the UN. To mention one example, we expect to address anti-Semitism at the Universal Periodic Review process in a more systematic manner and to give country-specific recommendations where relevant. Another example is to actively engage in cooperation with special procedure mandate holders on matters related to anti-Semitism and submitting all relevant information without delay. We look forward to presenting the full range of initiatives with the launch of the action plan next year. Thank you. 75 years ago, the concentration camps were liberated by the Allies in a moment of astonishment for humanity. Since then, some of the survivors have overcome the need to forget by the need to transmit to name the unspeakable in order to make the living hear the message of the dead and to ensure that this never happens again. But today, anti-Semitism is re-emerging, violent, brutal, with its procession of hatred and intolerance used by those who play on crises and fears. Anti-Semitism is everyone's problem. It is always the first form of rejection of the other and when it appears, all forms of racism proliferate, all divisions spread. We must fight it with force, first of all by fighting all violence and relativism, but also through education and transmission. Indifference is already complicity. As home to Europe's largest Jewish community, France is particularly committed to fight both domestically and internationally and has taken concrete measures to do so. On a national level, many measures are being implemented, particularly in the framework of the plan to combat racism and anti-Semitism adopted in March 2018. France can rely on clear political commitment and a rich network of public institutions, memorials and experts as well as civil society actors active in the fights against hatred, anti-Semitism and discrimination. This proactive action is also taken at the international level, including in multilateral fora such as the United Nations. France actively participates to the fights against racism and anti-Semitism as a member of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance since its creations in 1999. We support initiatives and statements on this subject in international fora. Each year, our embassies and our educational and cultural network organize different events on these themes. This fight has also been made a priority for the Franco-German couple in 2020. France intends to remain mobilized 
and to continue to promote actions in support of the fight against racism, anti-Semitism and xenophobia and against all forms of discrimination and related intolerance. We will continue to encourage states that have not yet signed and ratified the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination to do so. Rest assured that we will continue to actively participate and support international mechanism aimed at universally combating racism, anti-Semitism, xenophobia and homophobia. Mr. Ronald S. Lauder, President of the World Jewish Congress, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank the World Jewish Congress and other co-sponsors for bringing us together to address the scourge of anti-Semitism. We are happy to co-sponsor this important event. I come from a country which is home to all major religions of the world. We ourselves gave birth to several religions, the most prominent of them being Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism and Jainism. I also come from a country which does not have any trace of anti-Semitism. India has had a thriving Jewish community for more than 2000 years. The Jewish community is an integral part of the pluralistic fabric of India and they enrich this fabric as much as any other community. In this river called Indian civilization, every faith and every denomination is embraced in the framework of our democratic structure, pluralism, harmony and mutual acceptance. There have been numerous milestones in this more than 2000 years of Jewish community in India. For example, it is well known that when the Jewish community faced persecution from some European powers in the 16th century, they were granted sanctuary by the Hindu Maharaja of Cochin, Rama Varma, in Kerala. It was he who gave a land adjacent to his palace and the temple in Cochin, where the beautiful Paradesi synagogue built in 1568 stands to this day as a proud reminder of India's Jewish heritage. In 1968, the Indian Prime Minister was personally present when the 400th anniversary of this synagogue was celebrated, attesting to the importance we attach to protecting and preserving our Jewish heritage. India is equally proud of the King of Jamnagar, Maharaja Digvijay Singh Ji, Ranjit Singh Ji Jadeja, also known as Jam Sahib, who in 1942 provided refuge and protection to more than 1,000 Polish children, including Jewish children, when they were denied entry by other countries. He brought them up as his own. In November 2008, the whole of India prayed for baby Moshe Holzberg, who was saved by his Indian caregiver from the dastardly terrorist attack in Mumbai by Pakistani terrorists. We have many well-known Jewish Indians who have distinguished themselves in all walks of life. An example is General J.F.R. Jacob, a national hero in India, having led the Eastern Command of the Indian Army during India's victory in the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. Ladies and gentlemen, India condemns all forms of anti-Semitism and all forms of discrimination on religious grounds anywhere in the world. We now have countries taking advantage of the ongoing pandemic and spreading divisive hatred to other parts of the world on the basis of religion. COVID has not prevented them from supporting cross-border terrorism to kill innocent people and spread religious hatred. We call on those countries to stop spreading anti-Semitism, stop spreading hatred and stop dividing the world on the basis of religion. We ask them to look inwards to promote harmony within their own societies, stop sectarian violence and ensure the protection of minorities. We believe it is important for the United Nations to speak decisively and not take sides with one group of religions vis-a-vis -vis the others or justify terrorism in any way. I thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to say a few words. Thank you. I'm truly honored to be here today to reaffirm Italy's steadfast commitment to the fight against anti-Semitism. I want to thank Ambassador Lauder and the permanent mission of Germany for taking the initiative here in New York. As the Secretary General said last week, anti-Semitism is a poison, pure and simple. 
It is a poison which thrives on the illusion that we are somehow immune from it because of our painful history. Nothing could be farther from the truth, as we can see from the terrifying increase in anti-Semitic acts of hatred and violence across Europe. A poison which infects the most impressionable members of our communities, starting with our youth. A poison that finds fertile ground in the most economically and socially vulnerable corners of our society. These are just some of the reasons why it is incumbent upon all of us to renew our collective commitment to fighting against anti-Semitism in the multilateral arena. As a member of the Human Rights Council, the fight against anti-Semitism has been a top priority for Italy and a constant feature of our action in Geneva. In 2018, we inaugurated our OSCE chairmanship with a ministerial conference dedicated to the responsibility of states, institutions, and individuals to fight anti-Semitism. It has since become an annual tradition. Last January, the Italian government embraced the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition and appointed a national coordinator for the fight against anti-Semitism. I'm here today also to make a commitment about a concrete action we can take at the United Nations in New York. And I'm pleased to pledge that the permanent mission of Italy will work to promote the importance of fighting anti-Semitism through education. Every year, thousands of Italian school children participate in a national contest through essays, artworks, and other creative ways to commemorate Holocaust Remembrance Day a widely recognized best practice which we will bring to New York and promote as a model of how to involve young people in the fight against anti-Semitism. Hello, my friends. I'm uh, Ambassador Juan Ramón de la Fuente, permanent uh, representative of Mexico to the United Nations. And I want to thank the World Jewish Congress for uh, convening this event on anti-Semitism. The uh, principles contained in the Charter of the United Nations seek to develop friendly relationships among nations based on respect for the principle of equal rights to all human beings. Any form of discriminatory practice, such as anti-Semitism, is unacceptable. It only promotes violence, and we know too well that hate speech leads to hate crimes. Only a little over a year ago, a radical xenophobic supremacist drove hundreds of miles to target Mexican nationals in El Paso, in Texas. Antisemitism is also an expression of hate and racism. We must call it by its name, hate and racism. The failed belief on racial superiority is not new, but what we see now is how social networks generate echo chambers that amplify intolerance and xenophobia. So I believe it's time to speak with one voice against these unacceptable practices that empoison societies. Remaining silent is no longer an option. As co-chair of the group of Friends on Digital Technologies, Mexico will continue to promote the much needed discussions around online violence, digital inclusion, and freedom of speech. The General Assembly has just adopted a resolution drafted by Mexico on uh, cyberbullying to protect the rights of the children worldwide. Today's discussions allow us to reaffirm as well our commitment to the right to freedom of worship and the peaceful expression of beliefs. We need better practices, stronger partnerships on the defense of human rights. Memory and tolerance should go hand by hand to eradicate 
discriminatory practices in the world. We will continue working with Jewish organizations at the United Nations, in Mexico, and worldwide, promoting deeper cooperation towards a common front against hate and racism. We shall reinforce each other on these efforts. And we stand with the World Jewish Congress to reaffirm the commitment of the people and the government of Mexico against anti-Semitism and all forms of discrimination. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Romania commands the World Jewish Congress and the permanent mission of Germany to the United Nations for organizing a side event on the role of the United Nations in combating anti-Semitism, which we are honored to co-sponsor. The world is currently witnessing a significant surge in hate speech triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. Anti-Semitism, anti-Roma discrimination and conspiracy theories promoted online are proliferating at a dangerous speed. Romania stays firm in preventing and combating this phenomena which generate serious concern worldwide. Against this background, we pledge to continue to encourage states and international organizations to endorse the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's non-legally binding working definition of antisemitism. To facilitate exchanges and synergies with a view to increase the United Nations' effectiveness on the fight against anti-Semitism. To speak out against intolerance and hate speech in all relevant international multilateral fora. To encourage partnerships with UNESCO and relevant agencies directed at fighting anti-Semitism through education and promote synergies between UNESCO and other international organizations such as the European Union, the Council of Europe, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. To support the work of NGOs that fight anti-Semitism internationally. And finally, we pledge to continue our commitment to combat Holocaust denial and distortion, and to promote Holocaust remembrance and reparation for victims. I thank you. Dear United Nations, Distinguished High Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, the fight against anti-Semitism is a major world challenge in the nearest years. I address the high-level assembly on behalf of the Fund for Support and Development of the Jewish Culture, Traditions, Education and Science, Russia. Any form of racism, national and religious hatred is definitely no less disgusting than anti-Semitism, but still we highlight anti-Semitism. The reason behind it is that our states and societies, and even our civilization itself, are in the deepest crisis. And in times of crisis, it is anti-Semitism that is one of the main catalysts that could ensure a slide towards new Nazism and a new world crash. As a result of the rise of anti-Semitism in Europe and in the world, the Jews may be reblamed for all the troubles that happen to humanity. Pogroms of large Jewish communities will mark moral legalization de facto of inhumanity in Europe and worldwide. We all went through this, and you shouldn't go too far for historical examples. Unfortunately, the humanization and degradation of our civilizational moral foundations is an ongoing complex process, and anti-Semitism is not, is not its only component. The pressure on the old traditional European Christian confessions goes, goes on and strengthens year by year. It combines demolitions and desecrations of churches conducted by local governments and acts of vandalism and violence perpetrated by fanatics. This general process goes hand in hand with anti-Semitism, rehabilitation of Nazism and leads to the destruction of the moral and humanistic foundations of society. It prepares the ground for a new war which is to be justified by dehumanization and inequality of peoples. Russian Federation consistently and steadily makes great efforts aimed at changing the situation, especially promoting at the UN General Assembly an annual resolution on combating the glorification of Nazism, 
Russian NGOs conduct researches and effectively create conditions for bringing to, to justice Nazi criminals and murderers of Jews who are still alive. There is no doubt that antisemitism and its consequences should be rebuffed at the highest international level at the United Nations. Recommendations of the Fund of, for, su for Support of Development of the Jewish Culture, Traditions, Education and Science. First, to adopt a new expanded UN Security Council resolution reaffirming the principle of non-application of the statute of limitations to war crimes and crimes against humanity, underlining and mentioning the Holocaust, crimes of genocide based on xenophobia, racism and anti-Semitism. We should regularly upgrade this resolution on an annual basis, like the resolution uh, on the fight against the glorification of Nazism. And second, to, in to initiate creation of a high-level group under the United Nations Secretary General to counter the rehabilitation of Nazism, racism, xenophobia and anti-Semitism. Thanks all of you for your attention. Slovakia pledges to continue supporting the fight against anti-Semitism at UN fora all around the world. Having in mind great need to fight anti-Semitism through education, Slovakia will cooperate with UNESCO on special programs addressing the issue. As an active member of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, Slovakia will further promote implementation of IHRA definition of anti-Semitism adopted by the Slovak government in 2018. Firmly rejecting anti-Semitism and discrimination will be of utmost importance to us in the work of the UN General Assembly, the Human Rights Council and the Universal Periodic Reviews. Against the growing religious intolerance and violence against Jews in Europe and elsewhere, Slovakia will take part in relevant national and international actions to combat anti-Semitism and hate speech both online and offline.